Well, I think 2011 will be an important year for RED because many initiatives have gotten kicked off and we'll need to maintain the momentum and, and forward progress regardless of what happens in the, the negotiations. Um, for example, many countries have initiated national level RED strategy planning processes and are poised to move into the implementation phase. So I think that stakeholders both domestically and internationally are going to be watching to see if there are specific steps and progress to show that these governments are, are serious about the commitments that they've undertaken and actually start to see some changes in policies, some changes in practices, and some flows in funds uh, to get these, these national red strategies off the ground. At the same time, we have a proliferation of site level, you know, project level interventions that have been initiated uh, following COP15 in Bali, where you know, uh, demonstration activities were welcomed um, to sort of do the proof of concept for RED. And some of these projects are going forward uh, full speed ahead. Others uh, appear to have lost a bit of a momentum, both because of the financial crisis, which has affected voluntary financing, um, as well as lack of certainty about you know, what was going to happen with the negotiations. So I think 2011 will be an important year to see if we can maintain momentum on some of those specific project level initiatives, which will probably be the quickest way for actual forest communities to start seeing some of the benefits of red. Well, I think that what we're seeing is a historic alignment of constituencies. Um, you know, we've known for decades that tropical forests are important for all kinds of reasons. I mean, not least for the biological diversity that they contain which is very important to human communities, both the local communities and, and globally. And we've increasingly understood how important forests are for ecosystem services. So the municipal water supply of a city downstream may well be dependent on the integrity of a forested watershed upstream. And I think that's something that's more recently appreciated. Um, we also appreciate how both the livelihoods and the cultural integrity of many communities that live in the forest depend on keeping forest as forest. And when you add to that the new appreciation and potential finance related to the role of forests as an important tool in mitigating climate emissions, as well as in helping societies adapt to climate change, that's a pretty powerful alliance of, of interests. And I think that's what we've been seeing is driving some of the national commitments to reduce deforestation that we've heard even in the, in the absence of an international red agreement. And I hope that all of those constituencies and proliferation of country level commitments can help add up and build pressure to you know, push forward the international negotiation so that we can have a, a common framework within which these initiatives can work. But as, I, as I, I've said earlier, um, I think we're, we are at or near a tipping point um, that's driven by that alignment of all the different constituencies for better forest management. Perhaps there's an intersection between what the science is telling us and the, the political development. Um, 2010 was a year of disasters. You know, we had catastrophic forest fires in Russia. We had catastrophic flooding in uh, Pakistan. And even though no single, you know, weather-related event can necessarily be attributed to climate change, I think the public consciousness is beginning to get it that this is what the world we're going to live in will look like if we don't start taking action. And so when you add that to this alignment of constituencies who appreciate the role of forests in averting that you know, dystopia uh, in the future, and the potential financing that could be marshaled to, to help get it done through a red mechanism, you start having a win-win combination of political will um, to, to reduce risk as well as political potential by seeing instruments and, and ways forward to actually start taking action in national capitals and, and on the ground where the forest is. Research is critical in a number of ways. Um, first of all, it helps us to 
separate out the noise from the strong signals about what's really going on um, in our global ecology and economy and to begin to, to be able to say with confidence what impact climate change is likely to have on forests as well as what better management of forests could do for reducing emissions because all of those discussions depend on hard facts and empirical analysis and, and numbers. And so science is critical as a foundation for negotiation, whether it's at the national level or, or certainly at the international level. Um, 2010 was a difficult year for climate science uh, as well, where um, there have been criticism that maybe scientists have a hidden agenda or that have um, uh, been misleading in popularizing their, their, their findings. And so it's really important to reestablish the, the legitimacy of the scientific enterprise and, and its importance. And, and frankly, the degree to which the scientific consensus about the danger of climate change is in fact quite robust. Um, but in the specific context of forests and the context of red, science is important because there's a lot that we don't know yet. We actually know quite a bit about the direct and underlying drivers of deforestation, and we've known that for quite some time. Um, what we know a bit less about is what works under what conditions to address those direct and indirect drivers of deforestation. So, for example, um, we know that uh, lack of clarity about land tenure and, and, and land rights is a big constraint to better forest management. What we don't know as much about is how do we accelerate the regularization of tenure, the clarification of, of property rights so that red mechanisms, for example, can go forward. Um, so there's, a, there's a, lot for, a lot of questions for research to answer, um, especially in the next couple of years as all of these red initiatives go forward. There's new knowledge being generated every day about what works and why, and that knowledge needs to be quickly uh, disseminated and, and recycled in other places so that we're not having to reinvent the wheel um, as, we, as we learn what works.